What's going on YouTube? It's Necro Stevo and it is time for some VGC style battles. Now these battles are all taken from the May friendly last weekend. Unfortunately I was only able to participate in the first day of the tournament. I think I went 13 and 4. At the end of the first day, on the other two days I had to work doubles. And I was I was too pooped to battle after <laughs> working those ships, and I didn't think it'd be a good idea to try to try them when I was that tired. But I will be doing a team breakdown later on, but you can see I start off with Gengar and Pyroar. Pyroar getting that nice unnerve ability, pairing pretty nicely with Gengar with one being immune to ghosts, the other being immune to fighting, uh, and of course being uh, no longer annoyed by annoying fakeout leads. I can predict fakeouts very nicely because of course they can't target Gengar unless they have Scrappy, which Kangaskhan might have, and so then I just protect with Sky Pyroar, allowing Gengar to substitute up or switch out as needed. Now the other part of my team is a Trick Room team, and that's kind of just designed to be kind of anti-metagame. Now Gudra I really like for VGC. With the right EVs, it is just about impossible to take down with one hit. We see here um, I'm able to take a return, stab return from a Mega Kangish gun. Even with the Parental Bond added extra attack, it still barely did over half with my defensive investment. And of course that is an Assault Vest Gudra. And so expecting another return, I decided to go out into Gengar, trying to go for the Will-O-Wisp there. Didn't quite work out, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and it's going to give me an opportunity to evolve into Mega Gengar. I always like to wait to evolve into Mega Gengar against Kangaskhan, because there is a chance that it could be scrappy, and they might just stay in and hit you with a normal type attack, which really could hurt Gengar. He doesn't really get very bulky until after he uh, Mega Evolves. Now Pyroar is really nice with Gengar because Gengar can substitute and Pyroar can use Will-O-Wisp which will allow me to dodge Sucker Punch from the likes of Mega Kangaskhan, uh, Absol when it comes up, Mawile, Mega Mawile. I can dodge all those Sucker Punch very, very, very nicely. Now since I am behind a substitute here, I figure there is no harm in going for a Shadow Ball. I was really hoping that the Hyper Voice would take out the Rotom. Unfortunately it did not, I really should have just gone straight for Fire Blast onto Mega Kangaskhan, although I guess I may have missed. It's hard to say. Mega Kangaskhan is now at plus two, now that he has gotten off four power up punches. And we see that Rotom's Citrus Berry finally activating now that my uh, Pyroar is KO'd. Now right there we see the utility of Substitute over Protect on Gengar, since I know that my opponent cannot switch out, it's a lot easier to predict when I should substitute up and when I should try to go for attacks. And here we see Gigalith premiering in VGC for me. Gigalith is really nice just because he puts almost a complete stop to common talent flame sets. Giving him the Lumberry means that he really doesn't care if he gets burned on that first time, and he gets some interesting support options in the form of Wide Guard. And of course, Smackdown. I did actually have a pretty interesting match that DC'd, where I was able to smack down my opponent's uh, Rotom Wash on its switch in, and I had the Trick Room up, so then I just earthquake it the next turn and KO'd it. <laughs> so that was very entertaining. I wish I had been able to save that match for you all. But here, uh, we see both myself and my opponent switching around a lot, expecting the Spore from the Amoongus. I switch out to Gudra. Gudra and Escavalier both have the ability to dodge those Spore-type grass moves. Escavalier having the ability Overcoat, which dodges all Spore-type moves. And of course, Gudra having Sap Super means that Spore, Stun Spore, those are both grass-type moves. They will not work on Gudra. And Gudra gets uh, an attack boost, and to make use of that attack boost, I run a, a relaxed nature which allows me to have some attack EVs so I can hit Rotoms with Power Whips. Then right here my opponent is just trying to stall. I, he is getting um, Leftovers Recovery I suppose, but at the same token it's not really helping him. I do admit that I misplay here quite a bit. I predict improperly when he's going to protect and what he's going to protect with. Now he actually ended up 
staying in, going for the flash cannon, I really should have uh, double targeted there onto that Pokemon. Or even, I was thinking about going for the Earthquake that turn, but I was afraid to KO my Gudra. Uh, and here, especially since I haven't revealed Earthquake yet, here I didn't think he would protect again, because now he knows what I'm going to do. And now's a good time to switch up moves, but he actually does just go for the double protect again. And I make the mistake of going for Earthquake and attacking with Gudra when, uh, I don't know, I really should just go in for the Rock Slide, I guess. Rock Slide on Aegislash would have at least offset that Leftovers recovery. But I end up just knocking out my own Gudra because I completely overpredicted. I really thought he was going to do something different there. But that's okay. It's never uh, good to dwell on that type of thing. So we're just going to go out in the Gengar now. And now I get to hit the Amoongus with a Sludge Bomb attack, which is perfect because knowing the damage that I did before, I know I can knock it out. And I was hoping that the Aegislash would target down um, my uh, Gengar, and he does, but since I missed the Rock Slide earlier on the Aegislash, uh, this next one is not going to be enough to take it out despite Aegislash's pathetic defenses after it switches stances. It does do a really nice chunk of damage though, I must say. Um, and I'm not going to be able to live a Flash Cannon, and just to kind of rub salt in the wound and to make sure he can take me out, he goes for a shield form one more time to get a little bit more Leftovers recovery before finishing me off with the Flash Cannon. Now the teammates you did not see in this battle is Scavalier, Aromatisse. Um, they are mainly used when I see Pokemon with Prankster or my opponent's team is all offensive and they're fast and I can set up Trick Room. Aromatisse can take out Garchomps and Salamence with greatest of ease, and they can't really do anything to it. It's nice and bulky there. But uh, that was actually my last match that I had on Friday. Now I have another match for you all, just because, uh, why not? We're doing doubles, why not have a Zwilus double header? And in the second match here, against Paul, we see that I switch up to Aromatisse just because I, see him, I saw on his team he actually had a couple dragons that he actually didn't end up bringing any at all mainly because I had Aromatisse, uh, Aromatisse rather. He does start off with his own Aerodactyl and Aegislash. I like this lead up. My Pyroar has Focus Sash, so even if he wants to go for Rock Slide, I get a chance to burn something or at least hit something with a really powerful, super effective attack. And I didn't know what he was going to go for on the first turn here, so I just protected him with Pyroar. And I was hoping that he would just, um, go for an attack, but he actually goes for Shadow Sneak on Gengar. I know Mega Gengar can take those because I specifically e beat it to be able to take one, but then he just goes for Rock Slide, so I kind of completely overplayed that first turn and wasted my Gengar when all I had to do was switch into Aromatisse, who would have taken those attacks. It would, those attacks would have barely done any damage to Aromatisse. Granted, I would have been at the mercy of a possible Flash Cannon from Aegislash, but that's neither here nor there. Now I did see an Earthquake coming, and I also saw the King Shield coming, so now is a good time to not only go ahead and burn the Aegislash, knock down some of the damage that he'll be doing with those Shadow Sneaks, but I knew I could live any hit with Gudra, even if he wanted to go for a Dragon Claw, so I don't want to hit KO with the Tough Claws boost, I don't think. And uh, I had a Focus Sash on my Pyroar. So here we see just how little that damage, uh, little damage that Rock Slide would have done if I had just switched into a Romantise instead of what we're predicting on the first turn. I'm able to take down the Aerodactyl, and we see Aegislash going for Sword Stance, which is very dangerous. Now he's back up to his normal attack level. Fortunately, the burn does reveal that he is holding leftovers, which is really nice. A lot of time, I'm hesitant to attack Aegislash with a super effective attack, because you might activate Weakness Policy, which can be a pretty big pain in the butt. Now he's back up to his normal levels of attack. He hits me with a Shadow Sneak, does not do that much damage. Uh, he hits me with an Ice Beam, also doesn't do that much damage. So now I'm able to retaliate back with the Flamethrower on the Aegislash and the Moonblast onto the Greninja, which is just going to be fantastic because unless he's Focus Sashed, it's going down. Um, I actually have max HP, uh, about 44 defense and 48 special attack with the remainder in special defense, and that allows me to live a Sludge Bomb from Mega Gengar, max speed, a Brave Bird from Talonflame, adamant, uh, but not Bandit, of course. And it also allows me to, with the Pixie Plate, one-hit KO, Bulky Garchomp, Salamence, and a few other Pokemon like that. So all those are awesome, and because of me um, uh, having two Pokemon left here, he's kind of resigned to choosing one of us to take out. And with the way that that was going to go, I don't think he could have won unless he had Dazzling Gleam and got a crit there. But... 
those were good matches. Uh, we were able to see almost all of the members of my team there. I hope you all enjoyed these battles, and I will talk to you all later this week. Bye-bye now.